Okay, so since you asked me about, you know, what it was like for me when I was growing up, I thought I'd tell you. Um, <laughs> so when I was growing up, <clears throat> there was no such thing as anger management. There was, don't get your father mad or he will kill you. <laughs> and apparently, like, anger management in my house was, we managed his anger. So we just did nothing wrong, and or we tried. We, had, we lived in an apartment once, I remember this very clearly, where the hallway from the living room to the bathroom, there were so many holes in the walls where my father's fist had landed, aiming for us, that we covered it up with the front pages of fan magazines. My sister and I snapped into action, and that was how we dealt with it. Um, the whole hallway was like a tribute to Michael Jackson, Donny Osmond, Monkeys were thrown in, and then when you got into the bathroom and closed the door, John Lennon was staring right at you. <laughs> so, so that was how it was growing up for me, anger management. And they also did not have that phrase that they bandy around now, um, food anxiety. Um, we just had no food. We had no food in our house because, long story short, which, you know, five minutes. Um, <laughs> My mother realized that my father was maybe not the best choice and early into the marriage said, I want a divorce. This is the story I heard later on. Father said, I'll get you committed and take custody of the kids. Mother said, I'm going to see a shrink. My mother then became medically like a prescription junkie and was taking all the pills to sleep and pills to wake up. And I think from the time I was about 6 to 11, she was um, napping. So... What happened was, uh, nothing in the fridge. My mother had very strange cravings, though. She would wake up, and sh she would start cooking in the kitchen. You'd think it might be food, but sh her favorite thing were, was baked apples drowned in diet red cherry soda. When you're 9 and 10, beautiful meal. Really something. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ma, let's get those baked apples. My father would come back home from work like 7, 8 o'clock at night. My sister and I would be waiting because the only thing my father could make was steak and potatoes, which was okay. And he'd say, you guys look hungry. And I felt, my sister and I, we felt like guppies coming up to the surface of the water. He'd be like, you want some steak? I'm like, yes, steak, please, Papa. Steak, please. Potatoes, please. Like, you know, just up at the surface waiting for him to throw some food down. So I had food anxiety. And the worst of it was, of course, and I ho hope you will come with me on this little trip, was the school cafeteria. So I went to a city school. I, w I grew up in Philly, since you asked. Um, and I went to a, a really good school, a city school, public school, elementary. And the cafeteria, you know, was, you know, you know, Wild West. Hundreds of kids in there. And the thing about it was every single one of them had packed lunches. Because if you, if, if you didn't have a packed lunch, the program at the school was free. I don't know if any of you had that. It was a free lunch. Um, you, there's no free lunch. It was a free lunch school. But no one ever got the free lunch because it sort of put a target on your back saying, nobody cares for me. You know, so yeah, so what I did was um, sort of a compromise. I stole money out of my father's sock drawer. And in the morning, I would go down to the basement and get candy bars. And I would bring them to school. And I would pretend like that's what I really wanted. And then if anyone, and you may not have asked, but I'm going to just assume you will. If anyone asks, what in your life can you point to that might have really taken a hit on your self-esteem? I might start pointing back to this moment in time in my life. Because I'd be sitting in the cafeteria, and I'd wait for it to empty out. And then I would collect any half-full potato chip bags. And the kids would leave behind burnt potato chips. They would leave, I don't know if any of you had that. And so Picasso had his blue period. I had my burnt chip period. <laughs> and if you want to know where I really took a dive in terms of how I felt about myself, there we are in that cafeteria. But I had a breakthrough moment, and that's really what I wanted to celebrate here, which is for some reason, my father just went a little crazy with change in his sock drawer. And I, always, I could only steal enough that he couldn't tell because as I said my father would kill us so I could only steal what he wouldn't notice and for some reason one day there was just so much change in his drawer that I was able to grab about five dollars of quarters which back in the 19 was a lot of <laughs> I'm with Marilyn on that um, there was a lot of money and I was able to get to uh, I walked to school with my friend Claudia and she always stopped at this deli and got a sandwich and for the first time in my life I was able to actually order a sandwich 
to take to, to, to lunch, to, to the cafeteria. And I remember it's, it, was like, it was like a sandwich gasm for me at nine years old. It was just like the most exciting thing. I said, I want turkey and cheese on a hero, extra pickles, tomato, mayonnaise, the works. Two blocks later, I got hit by a car. Ha <laughs> ha. Since you asked, pretty upsetting. And I, it was a moment where, you know, when you think of getting hit by a car, you think of somebody being flat on the ground. But I swear to God, I was in the air, it felt like for days, just spinning. I felt like I was a gold medalist at the Olympics, just doing back flips and front flips. And I stuck the landing. Apparently, I was just able to land in time for them to drag me out of the street. And when I finally came to and I woke up, of course, the first thing I said is, where's my sandwich? Thank you. <laughs> 